want to tell us what we're doing? Unfortunately, there's been a lot of precipitation going on. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> we love the rain, but right now we're just sitting here waiting because it's coming down a little too hard, so we don't want to bring the slides in and get too much water inside. Um, we know it's inevitable to get some, but we're trying to wait for the rain to slow down and then get ready to head out. It's supposed to slow down in like 30 minutes, but we'll see. Right. Are you trying to pass time? I don't know if it's gonna last long. <laughs> okay. We had the awning out to kind of help us with a little bit of shelter. Thankfully, we're at a boondockers welcome, so we're able to pull up the truck right on the side of the RV. Kind of helped us get everything in that we needed quickly without getting too soaked. This is the reality of uh, RV life. Sometimes you got great weather. Sometimes you got weather like this. out of there okay yes, yeah it wasn't the most ideal situation to have to leave with it raining but raining and windy so it was like driving rain mm -hmm. but we prayed that the Lord would give us a little uh, weather window, window yeah. where we could get out and the rain actually stopped quite a bit it was only sprinkling a little bit yeah it picked up again right now but it definitely slowed down so that was a blessing so we're on our way now uh, definitely gonna be sad it was a beautiful place if you guys ever use harvest holes or boondockers welcome highly recommend bud's place out here in uh, oak harbor bridge b island yeah yeah it's F like uh north northwest northwest of seattle it's a beautiful place i wish we had more time to explore here we just don't have the time so we saw a lot of uh deer deer birds oh bodies. the birds were insane literally yeah. it was like songbirds all day all day we're headed to Manchester State Park, which is west of Seattle. Yeah, it's on the opposite side of the Puget Sound. We could take the ferry. Um, yeah. I think it would cost us around $50 to do that. The reason we're not is because uh, I needed to order something on Amazon. At the time, I didn't know we could take the ferry. Yeah. And then Buzz actually, uh, Bud let us know that we could do it. But I already had a package shipped to the Whole Foods down in Tacoma. So yeah. we got to swing by there anyways and yeah. pick it up. So we're going to head to Tacoma first, pick up our package, and then we're going to uh, loop around and head to Manchester State Park. Let's go. I'm going to miss this view. Oh, there's a deer right there. There's a deer right there. Hi, bud. Oh, he's a baby deer, I think. Oh, I know. Let's go. I don't want to make him nervous. He's looking at the trailer like, what in the world is that? <laughs> That's awesome. Okay, we're here. 
Manchester State Park. Well, we made it, all thanks to the Lord. So now we are just going to uh, dump our tanks. Since we didn't have any hookups at the, uh, the Boon Doctors Welcome, we're gonna dump our tanks, top off our fresh water tanks, and then we're gonna get to our campsite. These campsites are all dry camping, right? Yeah. Sounds like a little rainforest. Is it? Yep. Okay, let me deep in the rain. Let me get back there. All right, we're here. Just gotta help Alex back up. Oh, these trees are swaying. Just be careful on your left because you have like that little bit of heel that goes down. This campsite is insane. It's just like green out here. <laughs> Gnarly. Look at this. Wow. Feels like I'm in a rainforest. You know somebody complained about it in the review? What? That they don't like to like camp in or like they call bushy. Bush <laughs> I know. Bushy? Well, that's one way to see it. Oh, well, here's another rookie mistake. We didn't account for the jacks coming down and it's okay, baby, we'll fix it. Yep, we didn't account for the jacks coming down, so. Now we gotta hook the truck back up and re-level. I mean, not re-level. Maybe go a little further back. Oh. You okay? <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> You, I walk over here and it looks like something uh, radio shoes and <laughs> Jantel sitting over here. I was guiding Alex. Oh, I literally almost fell and hurt myself, but the Lord saved me. I was guiding him as he was repositioning and this dumb rock tripped me. And so I threw everything out of my hands so I can just try to wail my arms and balance myself. And I ended up all the way over here on this log. I think it hit my knee or my knee hit it. But thanks to the Lord, I didn't actually fall flat on my face. I probably look like a dweeb to everybody. Poor radio. Oh, my shoes fell off and everything. Well, at least this guy is in the right spot. Almost took me out. It's stuck. It looks like the this slide doesn't want to come out. It's weird. Alex is going to try to hook up to the generator really quick to see if that might be able to power on the slide. For some reason it sounds like the battery is dying even though they're fully charged. Thank God it's coming out. Oh, thank the Lord. Seems to be working out. You think it was the battery that's dead? I don't know. It also did it with the generator the first time. I know, I noticed that. And so I had to fully bring it in. So maybe when you brought them in, it didn't come in all the way. And so it was a little off. And I held it, but for whatever reason, maybe the battery didn't have enough juice to bring it in. Uh -huh. I don't know why, it's weird. Battery has full power. Uh huh. But I had to bring it in and then take it back all out. the way. Like yeah. twice. You don't think it's messed up? No, no. I mean, it, it went out. Oh man, that scared me for a second. That slide not coming out. All right, this is our cutie little campsite for the next few days. Site 48 in Manchester State Park, Washington. Little hiccups setting up. But praise the Lord, we got here safe and sound. And the views are gorgeous. Literally feels like I'm in a rainforest. You love it? Pretty sick. I know. <laughs> it's so awesome.
All right, we're coming out for a little walk. Hey, Alex has been working. We've just been uh, resting from our travel day yesterday. It was kind of, kind of long. Felt a little crazy being back in the city, going through Seattle. But we've been enjoying our our stay here. So we're gonna go for a little walk. Where are we headed? The beach? I thought we were in a rainforest. We are in a rainforest. Okay, it's down this way. I can already see it kind of in that area. I think Alex spotted something. Yep, he spotted a deer. Oh my gosh, oh, there's two. They're just grazing. Why do you always find the deer? To them first. <laughs> So that ferry caused all these waves just now and Alex was just telling me that that piece of land there is actually Bainbridge Island. We've been there before when we took a ferry from Seattle over. I didn't realize that was Bainbridge Island because it's so close. But we are further west or we are west of Seattle so it kind of makes sense. Bainbridge, we're right here at Manchester. But basically, all these sites are, are campsites. Oh, really? So, like, say you went from Mark, Manchester, and then you kayak to Fort Ward, you can camp there. Oh, no And then way. you move up, and all these human or wind powered boats, like canoes, kayaks, paddleboards, beachable sailboats, and rowboats. Wow. It goes all the way up to the Canadian border. So, you can take all these sites. Crazy. We learned that Manchester State Park was once called Middle Point a coastal defense fort that was built in the early 1900s. It was intended to help defend the Puget Sound from any incoming enemy warcraft by operating a minefield. It was only short-lived though because in 1910 it was shut down when another fort across the way was deemed more adequate to defend the area. Even though this fort never actually fired off anything, and in fact never even had guns installed, this particular building called the Torpedo Storehouse housed mine cases, anchors, and other equipment for the minefield. It was called Torpedo because at that time, Torpedo was a term for underwater mines. It's now used as a picnic shelter and sometimes even a wedding venue. The building to the left was a mining casemate where they remotely controlled the underwater mines. During World War II, the property was converted into a Navy fuel supply depot and firefighting station, and later in 1970 became known as Manchester State Park. We found this little trail. We're gonna see where it leads us.
<laughs> okay, so the other day we mentioned that um, on our way here to the state park, we stopped in Tacoma as we were driving through Seattle to pick up an inverter. a new inverter. We had gotten a thousand watt inverter, Correct. but returned it and we got a new inverter. I think I filmed that, yeah. so I'll insert the footage here if I did. But essentially we got a new inverter, what, a 2000 watt? 2000 watt, watt uh, Renogy inverter. Um, so right now we're gonna go about trying to get it and the, move the battery and the inverter inside the front storage base. Down on the bottom of our underbelly, there's an access panel there where all the wiring comes in. That leads to the bottom of the uh, front storage bay. So I'm gonna poke a hole in there, reroute the wiring back inside the front storage bay, and then route it out to the batteries, to the inverter. We might, in the future, move it to our ottoman. So I see in here. We have a ottoman like right on the other side of this is the bedroom and this hole which is here for a reason goes right to it so we might in the future route the batteries there but i think for now we'll leave the cables a little long and just route them here just so we can get the inverter going for now until we find a more permanent solution to what we want to do so right now we're not going to hardwire the inverter to to our breaker box and everything we're gonna use just uh, our short power cable run it over we have a 15 amp to 50 amp dog bone and we'll plug that into our short power turn off the converter of course so there's not a revolving loop we'll use that to have a, all our outlets live rather than um, routing directly to our breaker so it'll it'll be an easier thing for now for us until we figure out a long-term kind of solution what we want to do we're still unsure about solar and all that so but this will help us get some energy from our batteries so we're not running our solar generator at yeah, night that's the plan exciting all right this thing wants glued on looked like some First in super glue. Maybe it's gorilla glue. This is like gorilla glue on steroids. So we took off the black access panel there. This is just like a corrugated plastic. It's the bottom of our underbelly. And then the insulation and everything else is under this uh, like plastic tarp like thing. But there's the panel here with all our wiring. Um, everything comes into here in the front of the trailer so right there where the where the black tarp is missing is um, the front storage base so I'm gonna poke a hole in there and then just route all the battery cables up into there connect that to the battery and then yeah start routing all the inverter and everything you know what I'll poke a drill bit in there if it's wrong I'd rather have a hole this big than a hole this big yeah it's super tight. Alright, let's see where that came out. You know what? See if you see it coming out. Okay. It's going to be somewhere like in the middle of there. Oh, yeah, yeah, I see it. I almost want to go more to the front so it doesn't interfere with anything, you know what I mean? Yeah. But I don't want to hit this metal. Are you the general foreman? Hmm? Or are you the superintendent? Four and a half to the drill bit. So let's put some electrical tape. These should all be off, but, but just in case, right? They may touch another wire. These are positive and negative wires. Oh. And so you don't want to make a connection that you don't want to have. And so like this, they're not going to spark because it has the tape on it. So it's not like metal and metal. So there'll be no connection, basically. Yeah. I'm going to put a new connector. Yeah. You just strip it. That feels pretty permanent. Did it? Yeah. <laughs> it's like scary. No, it's not permanent. Jasper. Jasper. Yeah, it's crazy. Alex relocated the battery inside his storage bay. 
he's checking right now to see if everything works okay you can see that the wires right here are coming out down to the spot where he made a hole anything before the shunt won't come up on the battery meter Okay. So we'll go from the that that negative, which is technically our charger because our converter is in there. We'll come in through here, come into the bus bar, then we'll send one one of these to the shunt, one of these to the inverter. So when we do run the inverter, and then here we'll have that red come here, the power cord from here will go to the shunt, which goes to the battery meter, and then one of these will go to the battery and to the inverter okay but for right now we have the battery working which is what we need i'll be honest that didn't make much sense to me but i trust whatever you're doing so from the battery so I unplug the shore power cord So yeah, okay. Work. So it's working. So we're getting our power, see? No power, power. And it's just short. So people typically put, or that we've seen, they put a piece of plywood right in there, in between the inverter and the wall. And that's for it to grab onto something. Because obviously that piece of plywood is going to uh, hit the studs. You can make sure it's a little longer. Look at me being a construction Jeez. connoisseur, a construction professional. Second. All right, I'm the level checker. Let's see, is it, is it level? Yep, it passed the QC test. I'm the inspector. Well, I'm like the general foreman. The inspector, everything. I'm really good at inspector. Like, I was probably made for that job, to be honest. <laughs> it's sort of like my hidden talent. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. Good job, baby. Thank you. battery did pretty well last night with the new inverter like we mentioned before I think our dehumidifier uses a lot of power it sucks a lot of juice but it made it through the night batteries did well they cut off probably about 9 30 in the morning which isn't too bad at least we now we'll be able to monitor the battery usage so here it is so there's our inverter we got an extension cord right now running inside so we're only running the uh, dehumidifier off of that there's our battery. We got a, a few battery fuse there. There's the shunt, and that's just to monitor our battery uh, voltage, what we're using, what we have left. That's pretty much the setup for now. It's like a temporary setup till we kind of figure out what we want to do, but everything seems to be working fine. What happened? Are you ready to go? Where are we headed? You want to tell everyone where we're headed? Are we going to Seattle? Yeah. That's where we're headed, right? We originally planned to make a quick stop in Seattle to pick up a package when we were first on our way to Manchester State Park. But realizing the streets would probably be too small for the RV, we decided we'd have to drive in another day. And today was that day. Because the item we ordered was sold out everywhere at the time, and this was the last day to pick it up, we had no other option than to drive into the city. And even though it was a long drive, we made the best of it. I got the goods. Shout out to REI for letting me take the cards. Sneak peek of what we got. The last time we were here was back in 2016. So it was nice to reminisce and see the area again. We got the goods. Stop number two. So first we did the work. Now this is the pleasure. So we got sourdough started. I needed some Fresh sourdough I don't know if you should put it in the fridge because it'll freeze because it's on zero. No, it should be fine. And then we got our cook, croissant. Our croissant. Croissant. Always got to stop for a croissant. Holy Thanks. sourdough loaf. Wow. 
I haven't been able to make any bread. Sandwich loaves, right? Yeah. Oh, you got something else. We got a focaccia with jalapeno and breadcrumbs. Wow. Mm. Okay. A solid. Seven point eight. Seven point eight or eight. Seven point eight. If it was warmer, then yeah. Okay, I'm gonna do a little taste test for you guys. This is from Sea Wolf Bakery. Sometimes getting packages while living life on the road can be a little tricky, but for us, it's a small inconvenience in the grand scheme of things. I don't know if you can see that, but that right there, folks, is Mount Rainier. That is insane. Look at that. That is so cool. After making a quick stop for some groceries, we headed back to camp and later that night enjoyed our first campfire of the season. We spent many years tent camping before getting the RV earlier this year. So a campfire just feels so nostalgic to us. And in my humble opinion, is the best way to end the night. For a fire, you need three things. Fuel, ignition, and So right. today's our last day in uh, Manchester State Park. Um, we've been here for four days, five f yeah. five nights. So almost a whole week. Yeah, so we're heading out now on our way to Awa RV Park in Port Angeles. It's like a two hour drive, so not too bad. It was a blessing here, definitely recommend it. Beautiful yeah. park. Beautiful. Now we just gotta do all of our- Finishing touches. Our little finishing touches. Did you like our little campsite, baby? Loved it. Yeah, would you come back? Oh yeah, hundred percent. Would you recommend to anyone? Yep. The only negatives, would you say, are the Starlink? Yeah, no Starlink. Too many trees. Not enough sky that the Starlink can work off of. You might get spotty service, but that's hmm. about it. We did have um, Verizon hotspot, right? Yeah. That worked okay, so Alex was able to get his work done during the week which is nice. Just keep that in mind, but very quiet, very peaceful. A lot of trails, right? A lot. A lot of different trails. Just within there. the park. Yeah. Well, that's it for our little stay at Manchester State Park. Beautiful stay. And we're headed more northwest to Awa RV Park, I believe, which is near Olympic National Park. Just gotta get out of here. It's a little tight. But Alex is learning and doing better with with each day. His first time he was pretty nervous, but now he's doing a lot better. Went to check us in. 
He doesn't have any paperwork. Let's see what he says. Forgot my wallet. Oh. All right, let's try this again. All good? Oh, they got one of our packages. One of them. Nice. We're site 30? Yeah. A little bit of a traffic jam. Got some good reading material right there. This is probably the highest we've ever had the jack. It's pretty high up right now. All right, this is our little campsite for the next few days. Awa RV Campground by Port Angeles. And there's golden bears around here. <laughs> are known for them. See? The little Goldilocks bears? Yeah. <laughs> oh, is it? Oh, we should go in there. <laughs> I'm going to walk down this little trail. Wow, we could come here tomorrow for the Sabbath. Feels like I'm in another little ring. I think this was the old trail to overlook the dam. Because down over there, there's one of those steel posts uh -huh. where you would have had those overlooks and a little deck. It ends right here. Really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. You used to probably be able to look out at the dam from here. Yeah. See the beat, the fence. Crazy. That's all new growth. had a YouTube video uploading back in the RV, so we're putting it public. Sometimes this is where you put it public, in the middle of a forest. Honey, <laughs> tell us why you have a black bag on your hands. Well, first, you shouldn't tell us to start it with. <laughs> oh my gosh, what's on your leg? So I think something, some bug is on me or I don't know what. Instead of it just saying, hey, is that mud on your leg? Well, I didn't expect you to freak out like you did. <laughs> and so then, realize it's poop. Wait, let me show them. Let me show them. So, right here, he had something on More than likely, I was running. <laughs> I must have stepped on it and splattered it because it was all over my shoe uh -huh. and it shot on this lid. So now Alex has to wear a black doggy bag on his hand. Okay, we gotta head back, but we wanted to share that we might be staying for... an additional two nights. Mm -hmm. We had planned to head out to um, Coho Campground. It's in the Olympic National Forest, but it kind of puts us past the National Park. So now with that, we also figured out that 
That's how we found out. Getting into Coho the way we thought we could get in is actually a dirt road. And the way to get in adds like another hour and a half to our drive, yeah. which is not something that we were planning on. You actually have to go all, all the, the way. way down by Aberdeen. We were looking up reviews right now and Alex found someone who recently stayed in Coho and they said they had to drive all the way down. So it just doesn't make much make, sense, make sense at all. to drive all the way down there. We're gonna try to find another campground, maybe like in the Forks area. So if we find something in Forks, we could spend a few days on that side of the park and maybe go to whole rainforest. So yeah, that's sort of the plan right now. So we'll see. Chantel's yeah. been wanting to go back. Yeah. And this will give us a chance to explore more of Olympic National Park. So a few yeah. things have opened up, so might have a little bit of a change of plans. Yeah. So we're oh, going to yeah, move some things plans. around and then see if we can make that work. Yeah, so we'll see. We'll keep you updated. But what's good is, not that I didn't think great things about this campground, but it's, uh, it's definitely more of an RV park and we've been dry camping in, we did a national park and then a state park, a couple harvest hosts. So this one's definitely more busy. It's a lot closer to other campers and so you don't have that seclusion that you get in a national park or a state park. But finding this little gem has been a blessing. So I'm thankful this is here because it looks like we'll have more to do in our downtime. So we'll see what happens. This week of RV life taught us that even though you can make plans, you have to remain flexible because sometimes things just don't work out exactly how you thought they would. For us, that meant having to take a long drive into the city to pick up a package and having to cancel a future stay at a campground when we realized the routes just wouldn't work for us with the RV. But the Lord gave us favor with both changes and turns out these changes were just some blessings in disguise.